Hey guys, this is Alicia from LBCC Historical, and today our topic is Vintage Liquid Rouge. The first one we're going to talk about is the Vegetal Rouge, the 1922 Vegetal Rouge, and then we also have a 1930s Liquid Rouge. So I wanted to give you a little bit of information about them, but also sort of test swatch so you can see and pick the right color for you. First and foremost, we're super happy to be able to reproduce these recipes. These are the original recipes. And um, if you're looking for more blue undertones, I would definitely go with the 1922 Vegetal Rouge. But if you're looking for um, more orange coral undertones, then I would definitely go with the 1930s um, Liquid Rouge. When we get into the 1930s, something interesting starts to happen with the Liquid Rouge. In the 1920s, when something is considered a Liquid Rouge, it's meant for your cheeks, your lips, uh, your nose, your forehead, and even your knees, if you're into rouging your knees. But when we hit into the 1930s, we still see it called liquid rouge, but we see it changing. We see a liquid blush happening, and we see a liquid lipstick. Now, the liquid blush is still called rouge. This is where it gets really confusing. So the liquid blush is still called liquid rouge, but now you don't put it on your lips so much. It's just meant for your cheeks. If you do find liquid lipstick, then they would say that is for your lips. So for this recipe, you can still use it on your lips or your cheeks if you prefer. It doesn't matter. The only difference in these two is that this one is highly scented. And so while it might not appeal to everyone to have, you know, scented rouge on their lips, some it might not bother some. So this is a really pretty 1930s scent. And if you don't feel like putting it on your lips, that's okay, because this is the time when we have the liquid lipstick coming into fashion. So definitely check this out for your cheeks. I'm actually wearing it on my cheeks right now, and I only have one coat of it on. So as you can see, it's a very light color. Now the difference in the colors, this 1922 Vegetal Rouge has blue undertones. This 1930s Liquid Rouge has orange, a uh, red coral, almost like a vermilion uh, undertone to it. So you kind of have both covered right here. And depending on your skin type, you know, blues may look better or oranges may look better. Let's test these out. Once you purchase this in the 1930s, you have the option of a rollerball or an open bottle. Now, if you're familiar with us, most of our rouges come in open bottles because that's how they did it historically. So uh, we follow suit, but we do realize that you guys like rollerballs. The only difference that I've noticed is that a rollerball makes things easier and not as messy to apply, but you can still get better coverage the old fashioned way with tipping it onto the end of your finger and applying it that way. So once you check out in the Etsy store, there will be a drop down menu and you will be able to choose rollerball or open. And this one here is the same. Um, normally we just sell them open. Every once in a while you will see, again, a drop down menu for the roller balls. So it is completely up to you how you guys wanna do it. If you don't like the roller balls, you can always take them out, pop them out, and then put the cap back on. So this one does have a roller ball on. This is my personal one. And um, I've really been testing out whether I think the roller balls are better or whether I think the open bottles are better. And I personally prefer the open bottles. So let you guys get a good look at that. It's got a beautiful reproduced label. And so we're going to apply it. You can see it's rather dark. Uh, it does have some orange tints to it. Now my skin has very blue undertones at the moment. Um, as you can see, blue, blue green undertones. So uh, this one, you can just keep adding them. And then also if you want to, you can move it around a bit too just like this. And you can kind of see the color that is matching my cheeks. So now I don't have a rollerball in this one. So let me show you how to use this. So as with any, there might be some sediment. Sometimes we have some sediment in these. I would just give it a good shake. Open your top like this. And then you're going to put your finger over, tip it up, securely set your bottle down because you don't want it spilling. So if this was the 1930s, this is going to be the 1920s. 
and you can see the difference already. It's quite a bit more vibrant. It's quite a bit more uh, reddish pink with blue undertones than the other one. Let's get another coat on there. And you can see it's not drying super fast. I mean, you will have plenty of time to work with this. It's getting up close so you guys can see that. We could put another layer on of this so you guys can kind of see the two with extra layers here. As you can see, it's nice to apply with the roller ball, um, but I still think you get better coverage without the roller ball. So you can definitely see the difference. Now, if you're scared that that looks too brilliant, too, too bright of a color, you have to remember that if you apply it on your lips, your lips are already tinted with, uh, with a color, depending on your skin color. So it's going to take some layers to build up. And same with your cheeks too. It will take some layers to build up. So let me just apply a little bit to my cheeks to show you how I would do this. So for middle-aged or aging women, the 1930s beauty manuals usually say, you know, to fill in here, to fill in this, the cheekbone area to help give yourself a fuller look. Just let that dry if you want and blend in. So here you can see the difference. Um, this one here has one coat on. And this one has multiple coats on. And so you can really see the difference in how it layers and how it pops. Now, if you're working with uh, vintage makeup or vintage cosmetics like these reproduced ones, we always do a little bit on our nose, a little bit on our forehead, and a little bit on our chin. So don't forget that as well. If you have any other questions, feel free to pop them below. Definitely subscribe. We are planning on getting more videos out. I know we took a long hiatus from YouTube, but um, we are coming back. So if you're interested in trying out original beauty recipes, we would definitely tell you guys to give these a shot. Uh, Liquid Rouges are amazing. They are a staple throughout history. It's only when we see, you know, the, the lipsticks in um, the 20s is kind of when that started and then it amped up in the 30s and definitely in the 40s. Then we kind of see the decline of the Liquid Rouges and the change where now it's uh, liquid rouge just for your cheeks or liquid lipstick just for your lips. So if you're looking to try something really different, unique, and vintage, definitely go with these. I will put the links below so you guys can have easy access to them. And other than that, have a great day. Make sure to subscribe and we'll talk to you guys later.